I am live. There you go. Okay, today's date 212 um, review. So you can, yes, you can use this tomorrow on your review sheet. So uh, let's take great notes, hang on to this, and then take a look at it tomorrow, right? So number one, um, first of all, is it in standard form? No, I'm going to put it in standard form. So I'm going to go P of X. P for polynomial. That's why we use P. Polynomial P of X equals a 4X cubed minus a 5x squared minus 3x plus 2. So what we're doing is rewriting it in order according to its exponent. Does that make sense? Super easy to do tomorrow, right? We just rewrite it in order of its exponents. Okay. So then the degree is just the biggest exponent. That is the degree, degree 3. Okay. The leading coefficient after I rewrite it is just the number sitting in front, which is my 4. My Leading coefficient is just the 4. Okay. Classify, it's got 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. There's monomial, there's binomials, there's trinomials, but if I go beyond trinomial, I will not call it a quadinomial. That sounds really silly. We just call it a polynomial. Okay. Name, polynomial. Yes. Is it important if the, does the order of the negative Yes, very good question. It's always in what we call descending order. Great question. Because there's okay. an imaginary one. Yes, exactly right. Nice job, Penelope. Okay, number two, do you see it? It says plus. Don't do this times this, this times this, this times this. It says plus. So, 5x cubed. So, first of all, I'm going to put these two together. All right, I'm going to get a 9x cubed. I'm going to add my negative 3x with a negative 2x makes a negative 5x squared. I'm going to add a 4x with a 3x. I'm going to get a positive 7x. And finally, I'll just put together my 2 with by itself, right? So just plus 2. Okay. So I did. Thank you. Thumbs up? Good. Uh, number three, rally. This is where I get a little goofed up because of the negatives. So I'm going to make sure I don't make a mistake. And what I like to do is just bring the negative through. So I'm going to rewrite this one as a, I'm going to bring the negative all the way through because there are going to be some double negatives. So I'm going to have a negative 2x squared and a positive 5x and a positive 7. Okay. So I brought the negative through and then now I'm just going to combine like terms. Okay, so all right. I'm going to put my 4x squared with my negative 2x squared and I'm going to get a 2x squared. I'm going to combine my negative 4x with my 5x. I put those together and I get a positive 1x and I'll finally put together just the regular old 5 and the 7. I'll add those and I get a positive 12. How am I doing? Okay. Uh, number four, there's an invisible time sign here. So we have to multiply. But we're going to multiply the 3x to both of these and the 1 to both of these. So it's like double the root. So I will go, I'll go 3x times 2x and 3x times 6. 3x times 2x is a 6x squared. 3x times 6 is a positive 18x, and we'll also multiply the 1 or distribute the 1 to both of these terms. I'll take a 1 times 2x, and I get a positive 2x, and a 1 times a 6 is a 6. Now, if I can combine any terms, I will. Yeah, Rally? Oh, it's, it's about number 2. Okay, number 2, yeah, sure. How come the negative 5x squared isn't a negative 1x? Um, let me check, okay. Oh, right here. Do you see them? Negative 3 and negative 2 makes a negative 5. So let's say this. You've got a hole that's yeah, negative 3 the, feet deep. The, the plus sign the right. So I'm ad adding like terms. So I'm adding like terms. So I'm going to add a negative 3x with a negative 2x. Okay. Or here's another way to look at negatives. I've got a hole negative 3 feet deep. I'm going to go down two more. How far'd they go? Okay, all right. 
Um, so let's finish up four. I've got a six x squared. Combine these two plus a 20 x plus 16. Okay. Rally, you ask great questions. Keep asking, okay? Where did the 16 come from? Uh, 16. Which 16 where? I said 6x squared plus 20x plus 16. Oh, well, that's my mistake. There shouldn't be a so Good for you, Austin. Always catch my mistakes. See, guys? You're not the only ones that make mistakes. I actually make more mistakes than you guys do. Bummer, huh? Thank you, Austin. Shouldn't have been a 16, huh? Okay, now, there's an invisible, invisible time sign, right? So let's multiply. I'm going to go 2x times 4x squared, 2x times 3x, and 2x times negative 5, right? So I will get 2x times 4x squared makes an 8x cubed. 2x times 3x is a positive 6x squared. 2x times negative 5 is a negative 10x. How am I doing? And I will do another distribute. I'll distribute the 3 to the 4x squared, the 3 to the 3x, and the 3 to the negative 15. That's my phone. We got a 12, positive 12x squared. I like to line them up right there. Uh, positive 9x and a negative 15, okay? And then, just I like to line them up. You don't have to do it this way. I think it's easier to line them up. So I get an 8x cubed plus... Did you skip a problem? Oh, I did. See? Made another mistake, didn't I, huh? Plus an 18x squared, that, I minus 1x minus 15. Thanks, Anthony. So we'll go back to 5, okay? All right, number 5. Back to 5. Oh, yeah, the other yeah. Wow, look at that. Okay, there you go. That's why I skipped it, huh? No, we're going to take 4x minus 2 times another 4x minus 2. Obviously, I can't add or count either, can I? So I wrote it twice because of the quantity squared. And I'm going to just multiply again. 4x times 4x is 16x squared. 4x times a negative 2 makes a negative 8x. Negative 2 times 4x makes another negative 8x. And negative 2 times negative 2 makes a positive 4. I can combine these two middle terms. So I'm going to have a 16x squared minus 16x plus 4. How's that? Better? Okay. Turn the page. All right, here we go. All right, now, number 6. It says solve for it if it's already in its many equations. These are already like many equations, right? Then don't do anything. Just take your many equations and write them out. I'm going to have three answers, okay? I've got a nephew who's going in for open heart surgery. That's why it's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So forgive it. I should turn it off. Anyway, uh, I've got 4x equals 0, 2x plus 2 equals 0, and a 3x minus 1 equals 0, okay? So if it's already in its many equations, it's ready to solve. Does that make sense? So we're going to solve. Divide by 4. Divide by 4x equals 0. That's one answer. Minus 2, minus 2, 2x equals negative 2. Divide by, ne divide by 2x equals negative 1. That's my second answer. And my third answer, um, plus 1, plus 1, 3x equals 1. Divide by 3, divide by 3x is 1. Third. Now, how am I doing? That was pretty easy, right? Seven, we need many equations. So if you don't have the many equations, we need to common factor. Okay, so let's take a look at number seven. What I see is they have a common multiple of six, because six will go into 24 and also six, and they both have at least an x in common. So I take out what they have in common. They have a multiple of 6 and they have a common x. All right, so if I pull that out of both terms, what's left over? If I take a 6 out of 24, I'm left with a 4 because that would make my 24 and a 4x because I took out an x. If I take a 6 out of 6, I'll have a 1. You have to have a 1 there. 
You have to have the one because you need two terms, okay? You need two terms in here to represent those two terms. Now, if you're a little confused on that, double check. Check your work. Sure enough, 6x times 4x makes 24x squared, and a 6x times a negative 1 makes a negative 6x. So if you need to check your work to see it do right, just distribute. Okay, now I've got my mini equations. I've got a 6x equals 0, and a 4x minus 1 equals 0, and we're just going to solve. Divide by 6, divide by 6 x equals 0, okay? Plus 1, plus 1, divide by 4, divide by 4, and I get 1 fourth, okay? How am I doing? Okay, number 8. A ball is kicked into the air and follows the equation. Negative 16, you're going to see this number a lot because that's gravity, okay? Um, your egg drop won't, gr won't have this number because your egg drop is a lot of them are going to have like a parachute. Does that make sense? So we're going to drop slower than this. But a, a regular old round object should drop close to negative 16 feet per second squared. So anyway, and the 80 is what we call the initial velocity. So find the zeros. Well, when we find the zeros, let's set it equal to zero, okay? All right. Well, I need my mini equation. So we're going to have to factor. What do you see as far as factoring? T. I see a T, okay. Do you see anything else? I agree with T. Do you see anything else? Eight. Uh, eight will go in both, right? You guys agree with eight? And I think even 16 might go in. Now, if you don't take out all of the numbers, you'll still get the answer right because you're solving, okay? Um, how about 16? You guys okay with 16? Because 16 does go into 85 times. Now, I'm going to have a negative 1T plus 5. I've got my mini equations. 16t equals 0 and negative 1t plus 5 equals 0. Divide by 16. Divide by 16t equals 0, which actually that makes a lot of sense because before I kick the ball, it's on the ground at 0 seconds. Doesn't that make sense? T equals zero makes sense, right? The ball's sitting on the ground at zero seconds. So the ball goes up, and five seconds later, it hits the ground. So these two answers make sense. So if I were to try and take and look at a picture of this, my graph looks something like this. It's going to go, the ball's kicked, and five seconds later, it hits the ground, right? So what do the zeros represent? In words, I want you to use words. What do these numbers represent? In words, what words would you use? The location of the ball on the yeah, it's just when the ball's on the ground. You said it so much better than I did. But I'm just going to say it is when the ball's on the ground. You guys, okay? What are these zeros? When the ball is on the ground. Thanks, Lauren. And then if you want to use better words than me, I like that, okay? Yeah, basically, isn't that it? These are the numbers of when the ball's on the ground, okay? Now, take a look at my little picture. Where's the highest point? It's got to be right there. You guys agree with that? What's the time? 2.5. If it takes five seconds to go from here to here, <laughs> halfway through the flight, it's got to be at its highest height. So at 2.5 seconds. So it says at what time? T equals 2.5 seconds, okay? What's the height of that ball? Hmm. How do you find the height of the ball? Well, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I got an equation, don't I? H equals negative 16 T squared plus 80 T, right? I've got an equation. If I want to find a height at any particular time, time, okay, you with me? If I want to find a height at any particular time, let's just plug the time in and we'll get the height. So I'm just going to take my 2.5 and plug it in for both t's, right? That should give me my corresponding height. Um, anybody have a nice, a good calculator? Oh, I've got one. No, I got one. So I'm going to go h equals negative 16 times 2.5 squared plus 80 times 2.5, and I'm just going to use my calculator. I'm going to go, okay, negative 16 times 2.5 squared 
plus 80 times my 2.5, and I get 100 feet. Okay, you guys see what I did? All right, thumbs up. Can you do that one tomorrow? Rally.